All right, guys, welcome to quadratic uh, formula and discriminant. And what we're going to talk about today is actually, again, solving quadratics, but we're using this thing called the quadratic formula, which you should know or have seen before. And it can be used for any quadratic function. So in, you, instead of factoring or completing the square or using the square root property, if you just use the quadratic formula, you'll always be able to get the zeros. Okay. So here we've listed what the quadratic formula is, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's all divided by 2a. So that's, that's the equation we're going to substitute our a, b, and c values into. Now in red, I've made b squared minus 4ac red for a reason. That's what we call the discriminant. Okay, And the discriminant tells us how many solutions a quadratic function can have. Later on, in, when we get into polynomials, you'll learn something about the powers. But the most, a quadratic, the most solutions a quadratic function can have is two. And they can have few as zero real solutions. Okay, So the quadratic formula gives the zeros for any quadratic function. doesn't matter what it is, you can find the zeros. Okay, The discriminant is just a number. And that number tells us something. And there's three options for a number. A positive discriminant, a negative discriminant, and a zero discriminant. When the discriminant is greater than zero, you're going to get two real solutions. If the discriminant is equal to zero, you get one real solution because that, tr that trinomial, that quadratic, is going to be a perfect square. And finally, if your discriminant is less than zero, you're going to have two complex solutions. Okay? So we're going to look at all these. You're not going to see the discriminant until the end, uh, but you're going to actually perform it in every every single problem, but we're just not going to specifically look at the discriminant until the end. All right, so let's get into right into solving these quadratics. Now, first we're going to solve x squared minus 10x equals 11. So we're going to use the quadratic formula, and the very, very important thing is to make sure all the terms are on one side. So your trinomial Okay, or whatever your quadratic is equal to should be equal to zero before you identify your a, b, and c to plug into the quadratic formula. The SCAC meeting will happen in the main office now. SCAC members come to the main office now, please. And that's the SCAC members going to the main office. Okay, so uh, in red here you see I've just brought the 11, the, the 11 over, and that's equal to zero now. So now I've got a, b, and c, or excuse me, I've got the quadratic on one side. Now I've identified my a, b, and c. A is 1, B is negative 10, and C is negative 11. So now let's substitute into the quadratic formula the opposite of B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all divided by 2A. So there's the substitution. Now you simplify. Well, the opposite of negative 10 is 10. Negative 10 squared is 100 uh, minus 4 times negative 11. So minus negative 44 is plus 44 all divided by 2. Up here now I continue to simplify and I, I just wrote 144. 144 is a perfect square, it's 12. So you get 10 plus or minus 12 all over 2. And then I branch off for my two possible solutions, 10 plus 12 over 2 or 10 minus 12 over 2. So my two roots are 11 and negative 1. That's what x equals. That's where the quadratic will cross the x-axis at those x-intercepts. So that's an example of two real solutions. Let's look at where we have one real solution. Now, if I look at this, solving in this example x squared plus 8x plus 16 equals 0, all the terms are on one side. And I notice really quickly that two numbers that multiply to be 4 and add to be 8 are 4 and 4. This is a perfect square trinomial. So there's only going to be one 0, and the discriminant is going to be 0, and you're going to see that. Okay, so. Uh, identify a, b, and c, which is what I've done. a is 1, b is 8, c is 16. So by substitution into the quadratic formula, I have negative 8, the opposite of 8, or excuse me, the opposite of my b value, plus or minus b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2. This will be 64 minus 64, which is 0. Okay? And so negative 8 plus or minus 0 over 2, which is just negative 8 divided by 2. The answer is negative 4. We'll get into talking about multiplicity too, so there'll be actually two zeros there, but it's going to be a repeated zero, so you just write it once. Okay? If you factor this, you would have x plus 4 times the quantity x plus 4, and you would say, oh, x equals negative 4 or x equals negative 4. You don't have to write the answer twice, it's just once. 
so you know that that vertex of that quadratic is going to be the only x-intercept. Okay, so now we're going to solve the, this uh, quadratic 2x squared plus 6x minus 7 equals 0. And now, again, write your quadratic. All the terms are on the left side. It's the, the quadratic is equal to 0. Great. Now we can identify a, b, and c, which is what I've done in red. And now I substitute. So the, this process is the same. Every single example. Make sure all your term, quadratic pieces, your terms, are on one side. The equation should be equal to 0. Identify a, b, and c. Substitute and simplify. So the opposite of 6 is negative 6 plus or minus 6 squared minus 4ac. a is 2, c is negative 7. And now this is an example where we don't have a perfect square under the radical. We get 92. So when recall when we look at simplifying roots, we try to rewrite the number underneath with a uh, perfect square. So let's look. 92 is actually 4 times 23. So we have 2 squared times 23, which is what I've substituted down here. Well, that 2 is going to come out, and it does. So we have negative 6 plus or minus 2 root 23 all over 4. So 4, 6, and 2 all have 2 in common. So I can simplify that further, and we get negative 3 plus or minus root 23 over 2. Don't you know square root 23 and get a decimal and try to get the answer. Just leave your answer here. And there's two solutions negative 3 plus root 23 all over 2, and negative 3 minus root 3 all over 2. Uh, here, another example, uh, we're going to have x squared minus 6x equals negative 10. And notice how all the terms are not on one side. So in red here, I brought the 10 over. And now the quadratic is equal to 0. I've identified a, b, and c. And now it's a substitution process. And I go through and substitute all of these. And I notice that I have negative 6 squared minus 4ac. I'm going to have 36 minus 40. I'm going to have a negative discriminant. So that's going to tell me I'm going to have complex roots. Okay? So I have 6 plus or minus uh, root negative 4 after I simplify all over 2. Negative, the root of negative 4 is just 2i. So I have 6 plus or minus 2i. And then all over 2, and they all are divisible by 2. So I really have 3 plus or minus i. Those are my two roots. Okay? So that's a solution, that's a, a solution where we have complex roots, and they, they always come in 2. Complex roots will always be in pairs of 2. Like I said at the beginning, lastly, we have uh, looking at the discriminant. Okay? And this is specifically how many solutions does each function have. Remember, the discriminant will not tell you the solutions. The discriminant will only tell you how many are possible. So if I look at the first example here, I identify a, b, and c. And my discriminant, remember, is b squared minus 4ac, so I substitute. And I simplify. 121 minus 140 is negative 19. So I'm going to have two complex solutions. I don't know what they are. I just know there's going to be two. Lastly, x squared plus 22x plus 121 equals 0. I kind of cheated a little bit. I knew this is a perfect square. And so I know that b squared minus 4ac is going to be 0. So there's one real solution. You could plug in. But if you see that it's a perfect square, you're going to know the discriminant 0. You're going to know it's one real solution. OK? So that's quadratic form, the quadratic formula and discriminant. So if you guys have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to write them below, or you can email me at nicholas.bennett at dc.gov. Thanks, guys.